World is just around the corner and this is the patch that they're playing it on. Hey Summoners, great to see you all again, my name is Nathan Ng and I'll be your host for our patch 12.18 upcoming changes. As promised, I'm here with an update, providing you with the full list of changes that you can expect to see next patch. While they are subject to change, we usually see all or almost all of them make it through. This isn't a massive patch, but it's an important one because it's the one that we'll be seeing in the year's biggest competitive event. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content and let's get the video started. While the balance changes may be few, we have plenty of skins coming up that are definitely worth looking at. Ashen Knight Silas is one of them, and what's special about this skin is that it'll be available for purchase via Mythic Essence. You'll need a bit of luck and determination to score this one. For simpler purchases, we have this year's world skin for Azir. Spoiler alert, there's a lot of blue. Some Halloween themed skins are also on the way. I expect to see more as October draws closer and even throughout the month, but for now we have the Fright Knight Annie, Draven, Nautilus, Renata Glask, Trundle, and Urgot. Make sure to check out all of these skins and let's run through the balance changes next. We'll begin with the top lane and surprisingly, Riot has decided that they want to buff Nasus. Although he's unlikely to become a popular pick at Worlds, this is still a solid buff for solo queue players. I definitely watch out in low elo as he's currently at a 50% win rate overall. Any buff would be enough to make him a decent pick, especially since less coordinated teams won't shut him down as effectively or consistently. That being said, he's getting a pretty big buff and that'll help him split push and even team fight more effectively than before. His W's attack speed slow will now be 75% of movement speed rather than 50% of it. This is the strongest in isolated 1v1s, but I wouldn't underestimate its value in team fights, especially if he's built in some ability haste to support it. Also, his ultimate's cooldown will be reduced and scaled with level. At level 1, it'll come off cooldown 10 seconds faster, while at max rank, it'll be available 30 seconds faster. Teams that don't properly pressure him are surely going to be suffering next patch. In case you want help learning how to properly shut down your opponents or brush up on general strategy, you should check out ProGuides.com, where we have a team of incredible coaches that can help you out. We also have experts for every champion, so make sure you contact one of them if you're serious about improving. Now, let's talk about Udyr. Of course, we need to expect some adjustments for Udyr. With changes as big as his, it's nearly impossible for him to not need at least some tweaks to his numbers. While our analysts thought that Riot would do something to ensure players can't build full tank and still do massive damage, the changes that he's getting is going to be doing something else. Technically, Tank Udyr is getting nerfed, but not by much. I can't argue with it though, because they're giving his Q some massive buffs while nerfing his R slightly. This should combat the imbalance of players almost exclusively choosing to forgo his Q altogether. That being said, Udyr's Q is not only receiving AD ratio buffs, but will also grant him 50 bonus attack range on the first two attacks and cost much less mana, down from 45 to 20 at rank 1. His empowered Q will now have a new feature added, percentage based health scaling based on his level. Also, his W ceiling will be raised, well, like I implied earlier, his R will deal less damage than before. It's also worth noting that his R will deal less minion damage, cutting down his abilities to push lanes in. Finally, his health and armor growth will be reduced slightly. That's it for the top lane, so let's move on to the jungle changes next. For the jungle, we have a decent number of changes to go over. Melkai received some monumental changes this patch to make sure that tank builds are viable again, finally pushing him towards the top lane and jungle. That said, Riot wants to continue adjusting his role spread with some adjustments in the next patch. First up is an outright nerf because he's proven to be too strong. His passive healing will be lowered, especially at higher levels. However, he's going to be getting some insane jungle buffs with his Q's monster bonus damage receiving a massive boost. Finally, his ease AP ratio will be reduced ever so slightly to continue lowering the agency support Maokai has. As an update, Maokai for the first time in what seems like forever is the most popular in the top lane and not as a support. He's also picked a decent amount in the jungle, but that's where his win rate is the lowest, justifying the big buffs that he's receiving next patch. Shortly following his recent buffs, Hecarim has seen massive improvements in his performance. Everything from pick rates to win rates have gone up, and for good reason. Players are now able to deal more damage in longer fights, making tanky bruiser builds much more effective than before. The last set of buffs have proven to be too good, and as a result, he'll be getting toned down before Worlds. His Q's bonus damage scaling will be reduced. Both the damage ratio as well as the damage amplification will be taking a small hit. Also, his W's base healing and AD ratio will be lowered. I'm confident that he'll be remaining a powerful champion, so if you've been picking or banning him, you can continue to do so even in the next patch. Another nerf coming up in the jungle is for Kane. Assassin Kane players don't need to be worried, because this is targeted at Ross. His Q's percent health damage AD ratio will be reduced. This nerf will especially cut down on his damage against tanks and bruisers, but of course, he'll be even less threatening to squishy carries as well. Nocturne is also up for the nerf list next patch. He's receiving a simple one. His AD growth will be reduced by 0.5 per level, meaning that he'll end the game with 9 less than before. It's not too big of a deal in the early game, especially since he'll still clear the jungle just as fast, but will definitely cut down his DPS in the mid and late game. 
Whether you build him as an assassin or bruiser, a lot of his damage comes from his basic attacks as well as using the built-in bonus attack speed that he has. The loss of that much AD actually will add up. As we'd expect for worlds, Lee Sin is getting buffed. However, the buffs are small and we'll have to see if they truly have an effect on his pick rate. Buffs don't hurt, and anyway, he's gonna be gaining more health per level and also heal more from his W second cast. At max rank, this will be increased by 4% more than it currently provides. This hardly affects his early game, but in the mid or late game teamfights, that extra sustain could potentially come in clutch. Since we just covered a flashy playmaker like Lee Sin, I also want to ask you our question of the day. What champion would you like to see played at Worlds this year? For me, it's either Thresh or Blitzcrank. Luckily, Thresh is getting buffed next patch, but I think good hooks make for the sickest plays. Hopefully, we get to see more montage-worthy moments this year. Let me know your answers in the comments down below, and let's continue on with the video. Without any mid lane adjustments to cover, we'll skip ahead and go straight to the bottom lane. For bot laners, we'll be getting a small nerf for Misfortune. She'll remain a powerful early and mid game threat, but will fall off a little bit harder moving forward. This is because her health and AD growth will be slightly reduced. In very few instances, this will lead to a lost fight early on, but she remains mostly unchanged, losing 72 health and 5.4 AD by level 18. In light of her current 53% high ELO win rate, she's gonna be just fine even with this nerf, as most games don't go that long anyway. Kalissa has been performing pretty well in high elo, and it's probable that in her current state, she'll be too strong in competitive play. While her damage isn't going to be affected, her opponents will have more opportunities to try and outplay her in the early game because Kalissa's base health will be reduced by 40. This is a noticeable nerf because this means that she'll take one less basic attack before falling, a very big deal early on. That said, the amount of utility that she brings is still valuable, and teams who want more initiating power or to instead keep their support safe can still opt to lock her in. Now let's talk about a buff coming up for Ash. The main goal of this change is to buff Marksman Ash without accidentally giving excessive strength to support Ash. It's an easy change for Riot, since support Ash typically builds lethality. Next Patrick Hughes bonus attack speed will be increased at all ranks. At max rank, it'll grant 15% more attack speed than it currently does, a notable buff that will definitely help her remain relevant during teamfights later on. Especially with items like Blade of the Rune King and Kraken Slayer in her inventory, that extra attack speed is going to be adding some serious damage. Sure, it'll be a small buff for support Ash, but it'll hardly be noticeable. Speaking of support Ash, we'll move on to supports to wrap this up. For supports, we'll begin with a nerf for Lulu. Her W is getting hit in many ways. The cooldown will be increased at later ranks, the polymorph duration will be reduced, and the bonus movement speed that it provides to allies will be lowered. This is easily one for strongest abilities and reducing its versatile utility is definitely going to hurt her influence. I expect her competitive win rate to drop after this, but she'll definitely retain a high pick rate. We're going to be seeing Thresh picked a lot more competitively because of the buff that he's getting. Before expanding on this, let me just tell you what it is. His health per level will be increased by 5, and his ease based damage is getting a huge buff. At rank 1, it'll deal 10 more damage, and at max rank, 30 more. This will lead to stronger early game trades, a little more kill power later on into the game, and of course, a decent amount of extra survivability. 90 health is a moderate amount, but because Thresh typically builds some defensive items and gains armor from his passive, each point is that more valuable. In other words, it's a much more impactful change for him. With those changes covered, we finish our upcoming changes at patch 12.18. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and like always, feel free to share your thoughts with us in the comments below. You can also expand the description if you're interested in joining our Discord community, where you can make new friends and also learn about any future giveaways that we host. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.